This video is part 2 of my aircraft configuration guide for the Velocity 1 flight controller, yoke and throttle from Turtle Beach, and this is for the Xbox version only. It's strongly recommended that you watch part 1 before proceeding with this video and configure your controller accordingly. Link in the notes below. If you'd like to know more about this yoke and throttle for the Xbox, then check out my review video and once again, link in the notes below. Welcome to the Sim Hangar, my name's Mark, thanks for watching and let's get started. We ended part 1 having configured all the common elements for our yoke. We're still in the Cessna 152. Let's now head back to our control options menu. Make sure your Velocity 1 flight controller is highlighted and we're on the Yoke Basic Profile that we created in Part 1. With our filter on assigned, we're able to page through and see all the various bindings and mappings for the buttons and axis that we completed. But for the Xbox, there's one recommended addition. Collapse the menus and then click on Autopilot and then change the filter to All. And under Autopilot, we want to page down about two-thirds of the way down. And we're looking for Autopilot Nav 1 Hold. Note, not N1 Hold, Nav 1 Hold. Click in the box and then start scanning and we're going to map the Y key or joystick button 4 to that. Validate, apply and save and we're done. This completes our Autopilot setup and will allow us to follow flight plans. Press the button to activate and press again to deactivate. Aircraft come in all different shapes and sizes and designed for different purposes from carrying freight to carrying passengers. Some have one engine, some have two and some more. And so they use a variety of different controls and combinations of these controls. In this video we're not going to try and do a profile for each aircraft, but a couple of common ones that will cover the use of most aircraft. We're going to create a single engine basic profile which will cover the smaller GA aircraft. Some just use throttle and some use throttle and mixture. We'll also be creating a single engine advanced profile for those aircraft that use throttle prop and mixture. Of course we'll need a profile for twin engine aircraft which will include reverse thrust where needed. We'll create a profile to cover basic turboprop functions and discuss different options for getting our reverses functional with this controller. And then last but certainly not least we'll be looking at the airliners as well. We're going to start off by creating our single engine basic profile. And as this profile will be our building block for all other profiles, initially we'll first put in some common elements that will apply across the board. Once that's completed it's going to make creating new profiles quick and easy. Our first step is to head to the preset manager to create a new profile. We don't want to overwrite our yoke basic as we may need this in the future to build new profiles. Under the preset manager there's various options. The one we want is duplicate because we want to keep what we've already configured. Now I've renamed this profile Velocity 1 Flight Single Basic and that should now be reflected at the top as the active profile. We're going to start by putting some flaps in our configuration and I'm going to use the top rightmost throttle axis for this purpose. To find it quickly and easily I'm going to use the search by name and I'm going to type in flaps. Make sure your filter is set to all. And the action I'm looking for is flap axis. So let's map that. Click in the box and then we do likewise in the start scanning area. Now move the lever on the top right hand side and it registers as joystick L axis 7. Validate. Now I can just move the lever up and down to make sure that it is working correctly. That all looks good. Collapsing the menu again and with our filter on all we're looking for brakes. And this time toggle parking brake. And we're going to map this to one of the buttons on the quad. Some of the aircraft have parking brakes in very difficult to access areas. I've chosen the button just above the throttle B4. Press the button, it's registered and validate. I can now toggle my parking brakes on and off. I'm now going to go ahead and configure some of the other buttons to the lights. All aircraft require lights on. I'm going to start with my nav lights as they are often the first lights you put on. And I'm going to map this to the B3 button. 
Joystick button 31. I can now toggle my nav lights on and off. You can now go ahead and map the rest of the buttons for the lights as indicated. Make sure you choose the toggle option and not the on or off. The toggle option allows you to switch on and off using one button. And finally collapsing our menus again, filter on all, I'm going to type in gear. To find my landing gear, I'm going to map this to two of the buttons, but not to toggle landing gear, but a separate button, one for gear up and one for gear down. This is just a personal preference of course, and you can use the toggle function. The reason I do this at the moment is because the lights are not activated yet. That'll be in a future update. And I find that sometimes I forget, have I got gear up or have I got gear down? And of course these buttons will only work where the aircraft you're flying has retractable gear. Do you have trouble remembering which button is which? With your product you got two sets of sticky labels. The black ones are for the status indicator panel and the white ones which are for your quadrant. Stick them on the buttons. The labels cover most options and this way you'll always know which button is which. With all those changes done don't forget to apply and save and let's pop back into the sim and we can give it a test. I've turned the time to night so we can test all our lighting. First of all the nav lights and they're on. Nav lights indicating there's somebody in the aircraft. Now I'm going to put on the beacon lights and that's telling others we're going to be moving soon. Now let's try the taxi lights. They're on, that's looking good. And now my wingtip strobe lights. They're flashing, that's working. And lastly my landing lights. And they're working as well, all good. Let's jump back into the cockpit, that's my parking brake. And now trying my parking brake button on and off. That's okay. And finally, let's test that our flaps are working correctly. I have the access set so that the flaps fully up position is the lever all the way up. And they're working just fine. It's now time to finish off our single basic profile. We're in the Cessna 152 and note it's only got a throttle and mixture. So let's jump back and let's configure these. Most smaller GA aircraft don't have a prop control. Filter on all, we're looking for power management and then throttle. And I'll be looking for throttle 1 axis, which is towards the bottom of the menu. There it is. I'm going to select that, then click the scanning box. Then I'm going to move the linear or vernier throttle on the quad. As I move the throttle through the axis, it picks it up as joystick L, axis 8. We validate as always, and now to move on to configuring the mixture. And I'm going to be looking for mixture 1 axis, 0 to 100%. Once I've selected that, I will then move the mixture lever in and out so that it registers. There it is. Validate, and mixture's done. You can always test if it's registered correctly by moving the lever in and out. Oh, one thing I forgot, I need to go back in and just remove the reverse axis, untick the box for both the mixture and the throttle. This will ensure the physical movement reflects what's happening in SIM. And we can now test that. Let's move on now and create our second profile, the Single Engine Advanced. And to test it I've changed aircraft to the Beechcraft Bonanza G36 as it has throttle, prop and mixture. So all I'm really missing is the prop configuration. So let's exit and let's go and set that up. As this is a different profile, we'll need to save it under another name for easy identification. And once again, we're going to hit duplicate, so we copy everything from the single engine basic profile. So everything that we've already configured is already there. With our filter set to all, we're looking for power management and propeller. And propeller 1 axis. There it is. Select that. Once I've scanned, I shall move the lever. It's picked it up as joystick L axis 9. Validate, and I mustn't forget I've got to untick the reverse axis. 
otherwise the lever will be working backwards. Let's jump into the sim and give it a test. Now moving the prop axis on the linear control, and that all seems to be working well. We're done here, let's get on with another profile. Staying with the single props for now, we're moving on to a different category of aircraft, the turboprop. And they're different for two main reasons. One, the mixture control is slightly different. And secondly, most have a reverse function for the prop to help them slow down. And these are things we haven't covered yet. At first glance, things look much the same. We've got our throttle control, which in a turboprop is called your power. Our prop control, controlling our RPM and our mixture control, which is called a condition lever. And in a turboprop, a condition lever only has three positions, high idle, which is fully forward, low idle, and fuel cutoff. It's not a graduated control as we've seen previously. Also notice that even though my throttle is all the way down to full idle, there's an area behind that, and that's to move the throttle into reverse. So we'll be looking at that as well. So we're back to our control options menu. Make sure we're on single advanced and we're going to create another profile. So we're going to duplicate this one. And I'm going to rename this one Velocity 1 Flight Single Dash TR. TR being Turbo and Reverse. Click OK and the new profile will be shown under the Velocity 1 Flight Controller. And as we duplicate it, it will have everything that the single advanced had in it. And also this time to more accurately reflect what we see in SIM, I'm going to use the levers on top of the quadrant and not the vernier controls. I'm using the general aviation handles for the top levers and in the configuration of throttle, prop, mixture and flap. Back to our control options menu, making sure we're on the right profile and I'm going to choose power management and throttle. Filters on assigned. I'm going to overwrite my throttle one axis, which is currently set up for vernier control. Click in the box, move the top lever, and it replaces my previous configuration with L axis one. Let's now go and do exactly the same thing and overwrite the propeller axis, moving it from the vernier to the top levers. Records it as axis five, which is correct. I'm happy with that. Validate. And now it's time to move on to the mixture control. And I'm now going to change my filter from assigned to all. And because we're using a condition lever, I'm going to delete the mixture axis. That's straightforward and easy to do. Find it, click in the box and clear the current input. Validate that and it's gone. As I'm in a turbo prop, I want condition levers. Page down until I find condition lever one axis. You know the drill by now. Hit the scanning box, move the lever, it registers, it's axis six. Now validate and we've changed from mixture to condition lever. I must just remember to untick the box. Apply and save and now we can pop back into the sim and give it a test. A little bit of caution here, just move it back slowly till it moves to low idle, which is what we use for taxi and ground operations. Pull it any further back and it'll cut off the motor. Flaps all working fine. Note that although my power or throttle lever is all the way back to full idle, it's not moving into the reverse area. So now let's move on to the whole subject of setting reverse axis for this flight controller. Let's take a quick look at the throttle quadrant. All four top axes are marked from 100 to 0. 0 being fully down. Then as you can see here, there's an area past 0, as is typical for controllers, which is often used for reverse. And at this point, this is normally where a button is, at or just past the detent position. I have queried this with Turtle Beach, and I've received this response, which tends to lead me to believe there is no button at the detent or just past the detent position for this controller. They say that they intend to 
update the firmware to use that region when the functionality is introduced for third-party controllers in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And certainly more options for reverse thrust configuration are certainly needed in the sim. And these options once introduced may give controllers such as this better and more practical options. But we don't necessarily need any updates or upgrades to use a button function at the detent or past the detent position. But I stand to be corrected on the button at the detent position. But if I'm right, then in my opinion this is a significant oversight on behalf of Turtle Beach. But don't despair as I still have two options that can give us reverse thrust. I'm not sure if it's a result of Sim Update 7, but the two obvious mappings, Toggle, Throttle, Reverse Thrust, and there's also Hold, Throttle, Reverse Thrust, just don't work in a satisfactory manner. The difference between the Toggle and Hold function is the hold you need to keep a button pressed. These two functions work in a manner which is not practical or realistic. For example, you've got to move your throttle to maximum thrust and then press one of these functions in order to get maximum reverse thrust. And by the time you've sorted all that out, well you've probably shot off the end of the runway. I'm sure there are some better solutions out there, but here are two that I have found that you can use for reverse thrust. To demonstrate these, I'm going to stay with the Cessna 208B Caravan. So we're still on the single turbo reverse profile. Now if you've been following along with my configuration guides in part 1 and were observant, you will notice that I left two buttons unallocated. They were the up and down button presses for the hat 2. And I left them empty because we're going to need them now. Yes, we can use buttons on the throttle quadrant, but you're typically going to use this when you're landing. You're not going to have time to look for a button on the quadrant. You need something on the yoke and readily accessible. We're going to change our filter to all, then head over to power management and then throttle. And the action that we're looking for is throttle cut. There it is, let's click in the box, start scanning and I'm going to press the hat up switch. Registers as button 27. Validate. And now page down because what we're looking for is throttle 1 decrease. There it is and you can guess what we're going to do now and we're going to press the hat down switch. Joystick, button 29. Validate, apply and save and let's go give it a test in sim. Now I'm going to bring my throttle back to idle and now I'm going to press my hat to down switch to move into reverse. And there we go. Now there's two ways to come out of reverse thrust. As I did there, I simply moved the throttle lever let me go back into reverse thrust and now I'm going to hit the hat up switch. That's the throttle cut command and it automatically returns my throttle to idle. This works fairly well and is my preferred method. Option 2 is straightforward. Change our filter to all and then we're back to throttle. Let's scroll down until we find throttle 1. There's our throttle 1 axis, which we've currently got configured. But above that, see there is also another option for axis, and that's throttle 1 axis 0 to 100%. So I've now gone in and deleted my throttle 1 axis, and I'm going to reconfigure it to throttle 1 axis 0 to 100%. I'm still using the same physical lever on the quadrant, just changing the axis mapping. Now I can test it and see that it works okay. The other axis still showing is a sim bug. Let's apply and save and give it another test. Now with this throttle axis, I have complete range of movement from full throttle into the reverse axis. Not sure if it's a calibration issue, but idle in sim is not idle on the throttle quadrant as indicated. Physically, I'm about 50%, so finding idle can be a little bit tricky on occasions. You could of course always have the option to have a button set up for throttle cut again, as we did with option 1. But both options work fine. One is activating via a button, and this is relying purely on the whole access itself. The only downside with this one of course is getting that idle position set just right. So those are the two options available to you. It's a matter of personal preference. To finish off our single props, I just need to do a special mention of the TBM 930. 
This works very well with our turbo reverse profile, as per the caravan, but shows it in a slightly different way as it operates differently. Let me show you what I mean. I'm now going to full throttle, and now back to idle. I can go into reverse. I'm using option 1, as explained earlier in the video, but option 2 works equally as well. Now you note it's only got one lever for both throttle and condition, but there is a workaround for this, and it's using your prop lever. By moving the propeller axis from full to zero, it moves the lever across to the other side. We can now pull the throttle down into the feather position, and now I can move it into the cutoff position by using my throttle decrease button. And we're done. Although I do need to use my mouse to move it out of the cutoff position. But that's a small compromise to pay for getting the TBM 930 working well. To create our twin prop profile, I'm using the King Air 350i. This is also a turboprop aircraft, but the profile will work with non turbo twins as well. Let's get into it. Our current profile is already set up for turboprop. But of course we've only got throttle 1, prop 1, and condition lever 1 operating. There's only 4 levers on top of the throttle quad, not 6. So to get this to work properly we're going to have to combine some functions. Back to our options menu, make sure we're on the single turbo reverse profile, preset manager, and we're going to duplicate this profile again. And this time I'm going to rename it twin turbo prop reverse. Hit OK and we're ready to now start configuring this new profile, which has carried everything across from the previous profile. Step 1 is to change our filter to all. Then we're going to head to power management and then to throttle. I'm going to combine throttle 1 and throttle 2 to one axis. So when I move the power lever on my throttle quadrant, both throttles will advance together. My throttle 1 axis is already configured, so now I'm looking for throttle 2 axis. And it's there just above, so let's configure that. I'm going to start scanning and then move the throttle 1 axis. And it comes up with a warning to tell us it's already configured. But we know that, hit validate. And here we should be able to test that they're both working. Ah, I need to turn the reverse axis off throttle 2. Now let's give it another go and they should be moving in tandem, which they are. Both throttles are controlled by the one lever. That's done, let's now go and do the same thing on the propeller axis. And I'm going to do the same thing here, I'm going to bind propeller 2 to the same axis as propeller 1 axis. The warning comes up again to tell us it's already configured, but we're OK with that. This time I'll remember to take off the reverse axis checkbox, and they're both moving together. That's great, and now all we need to do is the condition levers. And you guessed it, we're going to do exactly the same thing. A quick check just to make sure they're both working in tandem. We're nearly done, but not quite, as the King Air has reverses. So I'm popping back to throttle. I've already got hat switch 2 down, configured to throttle 1 decrease. I'm going to configure throttle 2 decrease to exactly the same button. We don't have to worry about the throttle cut option as throttle cut applies to all throttles. No need for any change there. We're done with this profile, let's go and give it a test. First of all, let's test the throttles. That's working fine. And now we'll test the reverses. I'm using my option one, using the button, but of course, option two works equally as well. Engines, now in reverse. I can move them out of reverse either by moving the throttles or by simply pressing the throttle cut button. Now just check that our prop axes are working. That looks fine. And our condition levers are moving together. I've now put them from low idle into high idle. 
all the other functions and mappings that we've done in all the other profiles are also in this one, as we've built one profile on top of the other. We're good to go here. I mentioned that this profile is also good for non-turbo twins. They don't have reverse, so that function just won't operate. And the condition lever operates equally as well as the mixture axis, so no need to create another profile. This profile will cover just about every twin. Now I'm going to move my mixture all the way down and cut the engines. We're ready to move on. To configure our twin engine jet profile, we're going to be using the Airbus 320. But this configuration will work just as well in the Cessna CJ4 and Longitude. This time we've got a very different setup. Two throttles, now I want them to operate independently, and there's also a reverse. There's flaps, but we've already got our Axis 4 configured for that, so we're OK. But like most jets, it has a spoiler or air brake. So we're going to have to configure that. I've set up the top levers on the quad as indicated. Our flaps are already configured, but the rest we're going to have to put in. And I'm starting from the twin turboprop reverse profile. And as always, we're going to duplicate and rename and then build from there. I've called mine unsurprisingly jet twin engine. With the filter still on assigned, we're going to head towards power management and then condition levers as we no longer require this function in a jet. So we're going to pick all entries here and we're going to delete them. We do that as shown by clicking clear current input. We don't need a propeller function either, so let's go ahead and delete those. And now on to our throttles. Remember in this current configuration both throttles are configured to the same axis. We don't want that. So I'm going to choose throttle 2 and I'm going to overwrite that with the new axis. Click in the scanning box as always and then move the lever. It's the third lever on top of the quadrant, axis 6. Validate. So let's now go ahead and reassign throttle axis number 1. I'll click in the scanning box and then move the lever to overwrite. Joystick L, axis 5, happy with that and validate. We now need to add the spoiler or air brake and I'm going to use the search by name function. It's quicker and easier. I've typed in spoiler and there it is. And I'm going to choose spoiler axis. Once again, click in the box. I'm going to move the lever so that it picks it up. It's axis 1, that's correct. Validate and we're done. Everything else we configured has been carried over. Let's give it a test. Just check the throttle axis are working independently. That's one and now two. That seems fine, I'm happy with that. Now that is already configured, let's give the flap axis a go. Flaps fully down, flaps fully up. Let's now test the spoiler or brake axis. Fully deployed and now stowed. For my reverses, I'm using option one, the button on my hat switch. I haven't tried option two in this configuration. If it works, let me know. Let's also just take a moment to check the operations from the external viewpoint, starting with reverse. I'll just apply a little bit of forward thrust initially so we can see it in full operation. Reverse thrust now engaged. Reverse thrust should now slow us down and we should slowly start moving backwards. Let's now deploy the spoilers. They're graduated so we can determine exactly how much they open and close. And now let's test out the flaps. That all seems to be working well. Let's move on to our final profile, the four engine jet. What else could we choose for the 4-engine jet profile other than the venerable 747, the jumbo jet? 
and it's only going to require a relatively small mod from the two-engine jet profile. Currently only Axis 1 and Axis 2 of the power levers are configured. I'm going to be changing that so we've got power lever 1 and 2 on one axis and 3 and 4 on another. And we're starting from our jet twin engine profile down to the preset manager and once again we're going to duplicate and rename. This will be a new profile which I've called jet 4 engine. That's done, just check that it's the active profile and with the filter still on assigned we're going to throttle under power management. Throttle 1 axis is still correct but I'm going to put throttle 2 axis onto the same lever. So click in the box. I'm going to overwrite that. Gives me a warning, but we're well aware of that. We're OK. Validate. And now let's change our filter to all, as we want to pick up throttle axis 3 and 4. Throttle axis 4 is first in the list. I'll scan and move the top third lever on the throttle quadrant. Axis 6, that's correct. Validate. And before moving on, we mustn't forget to do the throttle 4 decrease. And we're going to set it to the same hat switch as before. That's done. And now on to throttle 3 axis. There it is. And I'm going to set it to the same lever on the quadrant. So this should come up with axis 6, which it does. We can ignore the warning message and go for validate. And then lastly, all we need to do is set the throttle 3 decrease. And once again, to the button on hat 2. We can validate and that's our power levers all set up. But once again I've forgotten to uncheck the reverse access box, which I'll do now. Our profile is finished. We can apply and save and go into the sim and give it a test. You could of course set all four top levers to the individual throttles or power levers and use buttons for spoiler and flap activation. This profile, like all profiles contained in this tutorial, are purely recommendations or suggestions. Once you've got the basic profiles in place, well, experiment and find what suits you best. If you've got suggested improvements and better ways to do this, don't forget to drop your recommendation in the comments below. So throttles 1 and 2 controlled by one lever on the throttle quadrant and 3 and 4 on another. My setup is very much the same as before. Spoiler axis, two for throttles and then flap axis. Now pressing the button on the hat switch and going into reverse, that all looks fine. And all four engines are in reverse. It was already set up in our previous profile, but we can just check the spoiler axis and then the flaps. From an external view, I'll just check that the spoiler axis or air brakes are working, which they are. I've now deployed full flap, but on the jumbo they do come down fairly slowly, but yes, they are deploying. And lastly, time to check that our reverse thrust is working. Just gain a little bit of forward momentum and then put in reverse thrust using the button on the hat switch. That's great, and that brings us to the end of our profile configuration. Before I sign off, just a couple of points to note. All the profile configurations here have been based on the default mappings available from Microsoft and within Microsoft Flight Simulator. They will not necessarily work with any special or bespoke mappings typical of third-party products such as Aerosoft, PMDG and so on. And to cover that sort of thing, well, it's beyond the scope of what's already a fairly lengthy video. When you're setting up these configurations or any others that you may be doing, just bear in mind that the configurator itself is a little bit buggy and in some cases will allocate the wrong axis or button. So do a few changes and then do a check to make sure it's right. This is not related to the Velocity 1 flight controller, but more the programming within Microsoft Flight Simulator. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you found this useful and informative. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want to see more information on Microsoft Flight Simulator on the Xbox. Stay well, look after yourselves, and bye for now.